What's up guys, Elijah here. Today we got another budget banger. The PC market in terms of price and availability has been pretty crazy for a little bit, but for the past months, it's been seeing better days. Today we got this awesome $320 gaming PC. Let's see what kind of parts are in it and how it performs. Thank you Super CDK for sponsoring this video. With their help, we have access to affordable window keys. Head down below, they have Windows 10 and Windows 11. Once you add the key to your cart, be sure to use the discount code SPLA to save on that sweet, sweet green. To activate the key, you just simply copy and paste it and put it into your window activation settings, click activate, and bam, legit window key for the low. Be sure to check the links down below and let's get back to the video. Note, the PC doesn't consist of the newest parts, but the used price to performance is pretty awesome. The heart of the PC build is the CPU. We're using an extremely affordable platform, which is AM4. It isn't the newest anymore, but you can still upgrade all the way to Ryzen 5000 CPUs. With the new CPUs constantly being released, the old stuff is finally coming down in price, which is very nice to see. I managed to pick up a Ryzen 5 2600 for pretty cheap. They can be found online for around $40 to $60, or you can even pick it up locally like I did. I paid $50 for mine, which is a great deal, and the guy selling it also threw in this Wraith Prism cooler for no additional cost. No computer is complete without a mother. So we're using this Gigabyte B450M DS3H that I snagged for $50 on my Facebook Marketplace. It's an alright board, pretty simple, 4 DIMM slots and 1 M.2 slot. And it came with the IO shield. To wrap up the motherboard, we need to adjust the RAM and storage. As many of you guys know, Ryzen CPUs like faster RAM, so we're going with this awesome 2x8GB kit from Oloy that's clocked at 3600MHz. And I got super lucky and picked this up for $40. For the storage, I'm going NVMe because what else would I do? Use a SATA drive and add extra cable collector? Pfft, no. The SSD I'm using is a Crucial P2 500GB M.2 NVMe SSD that I snagged for $40 brand new on Amazon. The house I'm going to be going with to store our mother in is from Gamdia. The model name is Athena M2 Lite. It is a nice compact one bedroom house with an unfinished basement and it was only $60. It comes pre-installed with RGB central air which can be controlled on the top of the house. Powering everything is a power supply from EVGA. It's a 600 watt E plus bronze unit with all black cables. Final piece of the puzzle is the GPU. I managed to snag an XFX RX590 Fatboy 8GB edition. They are selling around the $100 price range on eBay and I managed mine for $50 locally. Since I did get it used, I'm going to quickly take it apart and apply some fresh thermal paste. Alrighty, the PC is completely done being built. Fingers crossed that it turns on. Everything is plugged in. All I have to do is flip the power switch and press the power button. 
Fingers crossed. PC does turn on. There's the monitor. Come on, baby. Oh, the PC looks clean. Oh, there we go. So the PC works, that's a success. I'm gonna install Windows and then we're gonna play some games on this and see how it performs. After installing Windows and games, I tried to set the XMP profile to the rated speed, but we quickly got a blue screen of death and wouldn't work at 3600 MHz, so I manually set it to 3200 MHz and had no problems with it. But that wasn't the only problem I had. The first time testing Apex Legends, the GPU quickly got around 80C, and after a little bit, the monitor completely went black, but the PC stayed on. I flipped a little switch on the GPU to the performance mode, it did fix the issue, but it does run a bit louder. Now that I fixed all the problems though, let's test these games. The first game up is some Apex Legends. I suck at games now, but this PC handles them pretty good. I tested at 1080p with low to medium settings and managed an average FPS of 134. Next game is Cold War. I tested it in 1080p with low to medium settings, and let's just say I was getting slapped around in that lobby, but I still managed an average FPS of 108. Can't test a PC and not test for it. I ran 1080p with competitive settings set to performance mode and managed an average FPS of 188. The final game before some synthetic benchmarks is good old GTA 5. I tested it in 1080p with everything set to high. I tried to steal a helicopter from the military base, but failed miserably. We got an average FPS of 103. I then ended the testing with Borderlands 3 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Borderlands 3 got an average FPS of 76 at 1080p with medium settings, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider got an average FPS of 79 at 1080p with high settings. This PC performs pretty good for the price tag of $320. And overall, the temp stayed pretty cool, especially after switching the GPU to performance mode. That really helped bring down the temps, and I really didn't see the GPU go over like 72C after that. If any of you guys happen to want this computer, then it will be listed on my Jawa account in the next few days, and it will be in the next flipping video. If you enjoyed this video, then consider watching this video next, where I build another affordable gaming PC, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace!